Good day and welcome back to the Family Cyber Clinic. This week we're continuing the three-part series on fake news and misinformation and the impact that all that can have on our kids. Last week we spoke about getting our kids to read or research information before they share it because they could be sharing incorrect or fake information which is not not good okay so we want them to only share what they have consumed and know to be legit we gave you two sites um, that you can use to verify if information you're reading is is actually fake or real this week we're looking at images you may have an image that you have on your phone or an image on google that you want to find where it's being used online let's say you want to use it or your kid wants to use it in an essay and to avoid the plagiarism thing that they seem to be exposed to you want to know whether it's okay to use it and whether indeed it's fake or real and there's a way to do it it's called um, using a tool that google have provided reverse image search reverse image search and we're going to do it on an iphone i'm going to demonstrate how to actually do it on an iphone uh, i'm going to go to the iphone now and on the iphone sorry you can't see me uh you will go to google chrome and in google chrome let's just say we want to do a search or we want to use an image uh or either do a reverse image search on an antelope a picture of an antelope an african antelope so i go there and there's that picture so all you do is press and hold until a context menu appears so you press and hold the middle picture there a context menu appears and that just at the bottom there you see search google for this image you click on search google and google will review or at least show you every website where that picture lives and you can make a determination there whether the image is fake or real. All right. As simple as that, you can just do the same thing. Uh, similar images, it says if you right click on this picture, again, you get the context menu and you just do a search. And it's just going to go through the Google um, search and bring back information on that picture that you just did a search on. That's a reverse image search. And it can come in very handy, especially when you think people are catfishing you or people are just playing games on you and they want to get you into trouble. You can reverse image search uh, an image, if you like, and get information back that will help you make an informed decision about what to do with that picture. So that's important. There's another way that you can get to the same information, and that's by uh, using um, a tool again on your iPhone but via Google called Google Lens. Okay, so you have a file on your phone and you want to do a reverse image search on that file. So to do that, you go to your Google Photos, which I already have in there. So if I click on Google Photos, I have several pictures that I've already started doing stuff on. So if you see, you see those four pictures. I could choose the last one. That's the fourth one. If I click on that picture, you see, it's not very clear, but at the bottom right, there is a little square with a dot inside. That's the Google Lens icon. If you click on it, it's going to do an assessment on that image. And then when it comes back, the search information that comes back, We'll show you everywhere that that image appears that's just beautiful isn't it okay so that's a reverse e a reverse image search that you've just done on that picture that you have on your phone there is a third option um which can be a bit messy but it's still an option and that's um again you go to google let's go back to the phone you go to google and this time, you type in 
images.google.com. So you actually go to the, the, the website that Google owned for images, images.google.com. So we type it in, images.google. I know it's showing, but I just want to. So you get that. Now, it's, it's come up with Google Images, but it's not going to do anything because we're using the mobile version of Google. Okay, so to get to the images.google.com where it allows you to actually upload a file, you have to click on the radio button again. Not quite clear, but right at the bottom right, bottom right, you see three dots. Click on that. Another context menu comes up and you can just request the desktop site. So the images.google.com, the mobile version. Now we want the desktop version. If you click on it, you now have the desktop version, which allows you, you can see there's a camera there. If you click on the camera, it will allow you to upload an image. As you can see, it allows you to upload an image and then you can do a search. So if we, are, we click on upload, it will ask you where you want to go. Let me just enlarge that so you can see. Choose file and you can choose a file, take a photo and all that. Uh, we want to choose a file. Uh, what file can we use? Don't really have a file that I prepared from earlier. Uh, let's browse. Let's see if I can find one. Should have done this a little while ago, but it's not there. Uh, let's see, do I have a file? No, I don't have a file, but that's how you do it. You will browse to where that file is located and get that file uploaded and once you upload it you'll be allowed to search it okay then you can search and it will return the same or rather it will return the information similar to what you did or what you got when you uh, did the other two okay so if you're researching or doing a reverse image search on a file it will come up and it will tell you where the file is located on what website and all that all that it's getting from google's search engine okay so that's how you are able to do a reverse image search on a file that you found on google or a file that you have located on your phone you can do those and it will give you the confidence that at least you know where this file is being used you can say i'm making an informed decision about this file it's important that we uh, teach our kids to do that so that um, they will not get affected by the fake news, misinformation and all that, that we are trying to keep them away from. Okay. A bit tedious, but uh, we got there in the end. I've been your host, Lawrence Edem. Until next week, God bless. Goodbye.